now we come to an instrument that is used to to primarily detect the presence of current that to a dc current fine that instrument is known as moving coil galvanometer okay that is called the moving coil galvanometer <clears throat> now this is the construction of that instrument and this is the top view that you are being shown right this is the north pole and this is the south pole of a permanent magnet okay so so it has uh, as far as the construction is concerned it has a permanent magnet a permanent magnet which is which is made rounded okay kind of made rounded to have a uniform field okay to have a, a uniform radial field okay the field becomes radial due to that then it has a soft iron core a soft iron core over which over which the current carrying wire is bound the current carrying wire is found okay and and this is the the wire whose current we are going to detect through the galvanometer yes iron this is the soft iron core right this is the iron core this this right this is the iron core right this whole thing and you are seeing the top view of that so this is actually kind of a cylinder so so let me uh, let me sort of draw the <clears throat> draw the side view or or the orthogonal view of this it it, it 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 is something like this so you have the you have the magnet like this so hold on so you have the magnet like that okay like that Okay. And, and this is the soft iron cylinder right and, and, and this is kind of it's like that this so 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 this is how the cylinder looks right so so this is a cylinder okay and okay uh, oh no this will not be visible due to the cylinder so 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 that should not be there this part of the cylinder is kind of this so 
it should be say say like that right and then you have say things like this So again, this won't be visible, right? And and you have this coming like this. Do we see it? Do you understand? So so what we are showing is is sort of the the top view of 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 this, right? So 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 you are sort of seeing it from here, right down. This. Yeah. this this figure is that get it and it is something like that and there is wire bound over this so so it's kind of this so the wires are wound and like that It goes all over so so it goes the wire comes like this goes down then then goes below the cylinder across the plane surface and then comes back through that the opposite side right mm -hmm. understand so it has kind of a rectangular uh, mm -hmm. it, it's a rectangular coil whose whose breadth is about the diameter of of the cylinder mm -hmm. and whose length is equal to the length of the cylinder did we get that mm -hmm. okay fine then then there is there is a helical spring right so so the third one is is this helical spring that you see this this right hold on the, the this is the helical spring this okay so a helical spring a helical spring to counter the working talk to counter the talk okay we will soon see what 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 it is and how it works right so so and all this in is encased in in a in a wooden thing and 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 then you have then you have uh, this is not that visible then then over this you have this is this is kind of wrongly shown to not this this needle that you see is pivoted from here okay okay it is it is it is pivoted in such a fashion that if the cylinder moves like this the needle will correspondingly move along with this okay you understand do we understand that there's a pivot on the on the on, on this thing and and so so say it is kind of pivoted like this so it is pivoted like this it goes up okay there is a pivoting mechanism whereby this is there and as it moves this is the needle right so if the cylinder moves turns the needle moves along with it fine we get that so you should extend this all the way here okay and and, and now let's try to see how it works so 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 we come to the to the working let let, let me come here right? so that this is visible so so let us see how it works now what happens as this 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 current carrying wire starts carrying a current this wire carries a current 
okay so what happens the one of the leaves of the wire here you it, it is is left out right and this comes out on this galvanometer as a a simple nut here right so 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 you have to connect it connect the positive to the positive and the negative to the negative we'll soon see why so so you have these lugs here right and and the the circuit in which you have to to connect the to to measure or detect the current you connect one the positive of it here and the negative of it here now what happens the positive and negative that you see here they actually from here through a flexible connection go to go to the 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 wire that is wound over this this cylinder right so it is led into that wire it it kind of moves all around and then after it comes out from the cylinder it it goes there and and the and the circuit gets completed do we see that do you understand what we mean so if you have this as your circuit if you have this as your circuit okay then what do you do you break the circuit at at, at one point of time at 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 a position okay and and say i have say this and say a resistor okay and so what do you do you connect this this lug th th this wire to 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 this point right so so this wire goes there understand this wire goes there and this wire gets connected here and so so from here it goes all all the way it from let, let me raise this so from here it, it goes all the way to the it goes into this okay so so i'm i'm just representing it so it is kind of a bundle of wire like that and it comes out fine and that's how the circuit gets completed okay do not confuse it with some inductor or something i am i'm just representing this roughly here fine so so i'm showing how the circuit gets completed now once the circuit gets completed okay so so how do i have to keep the direction of the 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 current if if on this flank okay here here if the current comes up okay so here if the current comes up in this region right so if in this region the current comes up and and let me go back to this okay we see this is a magnet so 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 this is also there now if the current is coming up here right on this flank then and, and this is n and this is s then then what is happening i have i have my current coming up like this and a field that is like this radially like that correct okay now what happens i have my i l cross b so so this is the direction of my i uh, which is also the direction of l and this is my b so so if you look at it three dimensionally l cross b then then l this comes here l cross b is into the board right into the screen so what happens it is kind of this it is kind of this into the into this so what happens that will lead to to this cylinder moving in the moving in the clockwise direction do you see that so the moment you push a current into this so that from this flank it comes up and and here it goes down right here if it goes down then what is it it is kind of going down like this okay and then you have a a b like that and an l cross b is kind of comes towards us right 
which I am showing like this. Okay, so this is the torque here. So, so it, on this flank, the torque is in. That means that means it is in this direction. It is in 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 this direction, right? So, so let me use a darker color. So here the torque is like that, and here the torque is here here the force is like that. The force is like that, right? Now since since these forces do not pass through the axis of rotation, they'll produce a torque. So they 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 produce a bending action. Fine. So this whole thing will turn, and along with that, this needle also starts turning. Mm -hmm. Do we get that? Right. Now. Now what happens is. is that this force if there are n terms what is the force it is n times i l cross b is it not this is the force which is magnitude wise n i l b where l is the length of this. This, this this length is l right this the length of the cylinder is l right and and you must understand okay this is the whole whole width of it right so a force is acting here okay you see that a force is acting here and another force is acting in this direction. So, so there is another force that is acting in this direction. And this is my center axis of rotation. And this is, this is, say, if, if this hole is dia, then this is d by 2, and this is d by 2. Okay? And, and we know that the torque is what? This torque rotates it in the counterclockwise this torque also rotates it in the counterclockwise direction so so the torque is f into d by 2 because we have seen that torque is 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 f into r perpendicular f into r perpendicular okay or or also r into f perpendicular correct so it is f into d by 2 plus f into d by 2 and that becomes f into d all right so the total torque becomes the torque becomes n i l b into d and this is n i l into d into b and l into d is nothing but the area of this loop right mm -hmm. so so that becomes n i a b so the torque becomes n i a b get that mm -hmm. now what happens as this turns this helical spring comes into picture this helical spring normally is like that right now the moment you turn it like this you 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 turn it like this you are kind of trying to expand it like that right it will get expanded this thing will come here and this this thing will come here and this is attached okay this 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 is rigidly attached it does not move so what happens you tend to to make its dia more right if you if you you see this is connected with the with the shaft that moves that pivot and this starts moving if this starts moving then what happens then what happens this this kind of turns with this tries to turn with it the moment it tries to turn with it it, it actually it acts like any other spring, the linear spring that we have studied. 
so it will try to come back so if you try to move it like this if this is your operating torque it will apply a torque in the opposite direction okay which is directly proportional to the angle by which you have moved it from its normal position from its relaxed position okay so so the 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 resisting torque okay the the torque the torque that resist the resisting torque is directly proportional to theta and and we actually call it tau resist is equal to k theta you know so the force that you are applying on this and hence the torque is a constant and as it turns a point will come when your operating torque t op and t resist they will become equal do you understand that it will become equal the moment that happens that is the point of equilibrium and that is the point where the needle settles so you have your your tau operating is equal to tau resisting and hence n i a b is equal to k theta and if i write what is a that is equal to k theta upon n a b right now this this whole thing this whole thing is called g okay because it is a constant k depends on the spring constant of the helical spring that you are using right n is the number of turns that you have used that's a design parameter a is again fixed by the dimension of the cylinder b is nothing but the magnetic field due to the permanent magnet which is fixed right so this is a constant and and this is called the galvanometer constant okay this is called this is called the galvanometer constant okay now what happens it 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 tells you that that th this is one of the important equations to to know so in a sense it tells you that that your current is directly proportional to the twist so more the twist more the current double the current double the angle by which it twists right so for a given current if you if you start marking it right so you pass some amount of current that you already know and you start marking it that's how you do this marking but ultimately what is twisting the whole thing it is the current and the the, the resultant torque the interaction of current with the magnetic field that is producing a torque that is what is moving the whole thing but somehow we are utilizing that torque as a measure of the amount of current that the whole thing is carrying do we get that do we get that and that is how your galvanometer works so uh, where is this loose moving by galvanometer galvanometer uh, we'll soon see now after this what happens this galvanometer has got a very high resistance okay so so this galvanometer has has a very high resistance so number 1 is high resistance why why because so that the uh, so that less current flows through the because because the wire that you wind over this is a lot number of turns of very thin wire okay yeah no a lot number of thin wires lot number of turns of a thin wire so it's already twisted you cannot twist it no 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 not twisted because you require sufficient amount of torque to first of all yeah. overcome the friction with the pivots and and then uh, get the whole thing moving right it's it's a heavy cylinder okay so you have to have a lot number of turns of a very thin wire 
so what happens this resistance becomes very high mm -hmm. thinner the wire higher the resistance longer the wire higher the resistance right so it has got first of all a very high resistance now this high resistance limits the so so can carry very small amount of currents carry very small amount of currents currents because otherwise because otherwise gets heated heated and can melt okay it can melt understand so in a ship that's like one for the now the, this current is so small at times of the order of micro amperes that that actually the galvanometers are not primarily used to measure the current rather they are used as detectors detectors to just say yes or no whether the current is present or not present now where the hell will you require this kind of kind of an application you will require it when a wheatstone bridge gets balanced okay we have done that in chapter 3 that whenever you are trying to balance a wheatstone bridge you would like to know whether it is perfectly balanced and the very mark of that is being that is perfectly balanced is is that there should be no current through the through the galvanometer and you must have seen there is a g written right so 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 this is the symbol for for a galvanometer right and it since it is measuring current it will always be connected in series with the circuit okay so that is that is its primary use as a detector however it is it can be converted can be converted into a an ammeter into into an ammeter or a voltmeter into an ammeter not and because because ammeter or a voltmeter i am not saying and due to a reason the same thing can either become an ammeter or become a voltmeter okay and, and never both simultaneously because there are design differences in both of them okay if you if you if you remove the the things that you added for for converting it into an ammeter and and add something that that is required to be converted for for it to be converted into voltmeter obviously you can do the same thing the same galvanometer can be converted but but normally the those design features are kind of done and the whole thing is packed and you get it as a unit so you get it either marked as an ammeter like this or a voltmeter like this okay and you do not have have that flexibility in the same meter to to use it alternately as an ammeter or or, or a voltmeter that we see next right <coughs> fine 